So, with this video, I begin a series of tutorials about how to create a hairstyle for a character from Samir Mirtsayev. Links to his portfolio, YouTube, etc., I left in the pinned comment. For example, on YouTube, you can watch making of, of this character. I think that you have already understood that Samir made a completely finished character for the final render and now my task is to tell you how to do it. How to make eyelashes, eyebrows for him, hair and beard. The render will be in V-Ray on the GPU. Well, let's start creating. Samir told me that he was inspired by the characters from the Order 1886. And he would like the hairstyle to be the same style as in the game. That is, get something in between this hairstyle. Also by what we can observe in Sir Galahad and a few more characters. In general, we have the necessary references. So I think it is clear what we will strive for. Hello, everyone. With you, Krivi Leandra Charlie. And if this is your first time on this channel, then here, you can learn all the tricks and secrets of CG grooming and Ornatrix. Also, get your questions answered and get inspired by references from the games. Subscribe and write in the comments, how long you do 3D and why you chose this field. What influenced this? If you like what I do, I would be very grateful for any donation to PayPal at the link in the description. Buying my models on CG Trader or ArtStation, as well as the purchase of any of the plugins at the links in the attached commentary. What's in it for you? It's very simple. If enough money is collected per month, I will be able to devote my full time to creating lessons for you, not three hours a day, which, as you have already noticed, not enough for the fast release of new episodes. Also, don't forget to check out the YouTube community. As I share there, all kinds of news. Uploading answers to questions, talking about the time spent time on lessons, and so on. And, of course, don't forget about my Instagram. Where, I upload all my work in VIPs. So, I pick the head and hide the rest. Since I don't need it yet. And I proceed to the separation of the scalp. Yes, in the new workflow that appeared in Ornatrix 3 you don't have to separate it. But I prefer to use the old workflow for now. Because in the new, many more points need to be finalized. So. As usual, select the polygon selection tool with a brush. We make these settings and we proceed to the separation of the scalp. I always select a larger area. I do this in order not to limit myself in drawing a mask later. This will make it much more convenient to draw it. When I have selected all the necessary polygons, then go to the menu edit, duplicate, or press Ctrl plus D to duplicate the head. Then I press the key combination Ctrl plus I and delete. This will invert the selection and delete unnecessary polygons. As a result, I got the scalp I needed, with which I can continue working. Further, after separating the scalp, go to the modify menu and do freeze and reset transform. After that, edit, delete by type. History. This must be done so that in the future there are no problems with the coordinates and the correct location of the guides. After that, I always create a special layer for the head to make it convenient to quickly hide or show it. Then select the scalp and add the furball preset. This preset will create a basic modifier list. Temporarily hide everything before guide from mesh and proceed to its settings. Randomness equals zero so that the guides are of the same length and the length is a little smaller. After that, we start drawing a mask for the growth of guides and hair. If you have a Udim model, then before that, you need to create a separate UV map for the scalp. If you don't do the unfolding, you simply cannot draw on the model. And do not forget about the material Lambert 1, which must be assigned before drawing. I'll show you what happens if you don't do a UV. Make these settings in tool settings and start drawing.
and as soon as you start making the first strokes, you will immediately notice why you need to do a separate UV mapping for this scalp. This is due to the fact that the model has a UDM UV type and each piece is on a different UV square. For Onatrix mask, everything should be in one square. As a result of all the manipulations, I got such a UW mapping, which is more convenient for drawing a mask. Next, I start drawing the mask and I will not cut this process out of the video, as many of you have asked for it. The mask should be monochromatic without shades. This is why I turned off the stylus pressure setting in the tool settings. Thus, the guides and hair will grow where it is needed. And they will not crawl out in unnecessary places. To do this, you also need to choose a round brush without soft edges. Then, of course, I blur the edges. But at this stage, the challenge is to get a sharp mask for the growth of the guides. As soon as you have finished drawing the mask, be sure to click on the Save Textures button. This way, you will save it in the project folder. Then we start setting up guide from mesh. Here I usually enter a value equal to 100 to 300 guides. I always watch the guides spread across the surface. And I select such a value so that there are not so many of them, but also so that they are evenly distributed over the scalp. After that, I assign surface comb, to adjust the direction of the sinks. After assigning surface comb, select this icon and start creating the sinks. To do this, you need to click in the place where you want to create it. And just pull the mouse in the desired direction. And for each sink, choose mirror axis equals X. So that the axes are automatically mirrored and you do not set them manually. That is, on the symmetrical side, thus, the desired sink will appear. To make it easier to control the sink, I turn off the move long surface option. And I move it in the right direction. This way the axes are not tied to the scalp surface. I turn on the affect whole strand option, so that the hair takes into account the length of the guide. This way, you will be able to control the entire length in the right place, without having to draw a mask. Use the slope ramp, to adjust the bend type for the sink. Also, in the panel on the left, you can customize this type for a specific area, that the sink covers. After setting up the direction of the sinks, I apply another edit guides to bake this shape and continue editing. Next, turn on hair from guides to see what happens in the scene. Then I assign the hair physical shader to display the hair normally in the viewport. Also, I go into the settings for their display, by selecting the topmost modifier, and activate the camera facing normals option. And turn on change width to activate the hair thickness setting. For a comfortable visual perception, I also activate ambient occlusion. Next, I rename change width to mesh from strands, since this is what I will use for the thickness of the sculpture. After that, I apply the modifier of the same name and make such settings.
Then I add another change width for the viewport. In hair from guides I turn on 100% hair to see the result with this thickness. I activate the mask that I drew in advance, in the distribution map. Then I edit it a little, blurring the edges for a smooth transition from skin to hair. Naturally, I save the result with Save Textures for Maya to update it in Hair from Guides. Now, naturally, we will not see a clear transition since the thickness of the hair is not for rendering and their number is not so large. But I always do all this in advance so that later I can quickly check on the render. After all, we have already applied the mask and you can be calm. Next, apply clump and length to see the result with them. Then, activate subclump. In hair from guides we increase the value to 100,000 hairs, and again we recalculate clumping by clicking on the create clumps button, in each of the clumps. Naturally, these are basic settings and we will edit them later. And that's all I wanted to show in this episode, thank you for watching and I wish you a good mood. To be continued.